So I've been asked a bunch lately how I made my own at-home ice bath. I made this probably six or seven years ago. I think it was around 2016, 2017, and it's still running. It's basically a used chest freezer off of Craigslist. I paid like a couple hundred bucks for it. And check it out. It makes water, ice water. Look at these ice big chunks of ice right here 24 7. i don't have to put any ice in it um, and actually i added the filter a few years later and realized i don't have to change the water that often if you can see this thermometer look at that the water's sitting right at zero zero point two degrees celsius and 31.8 degrees fahrenheit right above freezing now i'll show you how you can set it to basically whatever temperature you want See this little thermometer right here? I tape this at the top of the lid, so it's actually regulating the air temperature. And the freezer itself turns on and cools the water and creates the cold water. And you use this, come in here real quick and look at this. This is called a Johnson Control. I will put this in the link below the video and I'll show you exactly how to set it up. But basically this plugs in to the freezer and it plugs into the wall and this regulates your temperature. So I have it set down to go down to 40 degrees and 48 degrees, meaning that's the range from 40 to 48 degrees. So once that air temperature inside there hits 40 degrees, the freezer actually turns off. Then when the air temperature in there goes up to 48 degrees, the freezer kicks back on and starts cooling that water back down. So once you set this up, you don't have to do anything. So the cool thing is once you set this up, there's basically very little maintenance. You just change out the water maybe once a month, maybe once every couple of months, depends on how often you use it. Once I added the water filter in there, um, I change the water like once every two months right now, and I'm using it four days a week for three minute sessions. So I'm getting 12 minutes a week in the ice bath, which if you look at the, the sober uh, research that was done, it's 11 minutes per week is kind of your minimum threshold you want to aim for. So I'm going that 12 minutes a week. It's I go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday at three minutes at a time. And then when I change the water, basically, you just get this suction pump, this water pump, hook up a hose to it, plug it in, throw this in the bottom, come over here real quick, and you just throw this in the bottom, it's a submersible pump, and it just sucks all the water out of there. I'll kind of spray down the inside, wipe it down, and then fill it back up. I fill it up with filter water. Actually, come over here, and I'll show you how I get filter water, because I'm. I obviously care about my health, which is why I'm doing an ice bath. If you care about your health, then you may want to go the extra mile like I do and make sure that you're not bathing 12 minutes a week in some toxic water that's coming out of your faucet because we know the water is filled with pharmaceuticals, filled with fluoride and chemicals, and you're sitting in there soaking that in for 12 minutes a week. We know that it penetrates the skin and goes to the organs. So, you might as well go the extra mile and, and filter your water, especially you only need to fill it up once every couple of months. But what I get is an RV water filter, hooks right up to your spigot, and then I actually have a, a drinking water hose, which is less toxic than a regular outdoor hose. So one final thing I wanna show you when you're considering buying a chest freezer, number one, you know, make sure it's big enough that you can sit down in it. I can sit, I'm six foot two, and I can sit all the way down up to my neck. I keep the water, as you can see, it's about three quarters full. Uh, when I get in it, obviously my body raises the water higher, so it sits right above my shoulders. And I sit in the, the deeper end and just rest my feet up here where this little ledge is. If you can see that in there, that little ledge, I actually just bend my knees, rest my feet on that, and then sit all the way down in the bottom there. And my whole body is submerged all the way up to my neck. And this freezer is not very big. This is only like a four foot, I think it's four foot by three foot freezer. So obviously you could get a bigger one, 
Um, you know, the bigger they are, generally the more expensive, but I just wanted something quick and easy, pay a couple hundred bucks for it, and, uh, and it's been working ever since. So the one thing I wanna show you here though is make sure the inside panels are white, not the silver aluminum. Again, you don't wanna be sitting in aluminum. Aluminum is incredibly toxic. It's a neurotoxin, it's an endocrine disruptor, and that aluminum can leach into the water and then you're sitting in there you know, for long periods of time over the course of years and leaching that aluminum into your bloodstream. So make sure you have this white coated interior. And then if you can come in close over here and look at this sealant, I actually got like a marine underwater caulking sealant. Can you see this black line right here? And I just went around and sealed all the seams, all the cracks all the way down. You probably can't see it under the water there. Um, is that totally necessary? I don't know. I wanted to just make sure that there wasn't water leaking into the rest of the chest freezer. But, you know, it doesn't take you much time. It's easy to do. It's an extra little precaution. Like I said, I've been using this for the past six or seven years and it's still working and still running to this day. And as you can see, I just bought a pond water filter you can see it's bubbling. So it's actually aerating the water and it's filtering the water at the same time. I'll put a link below for that as well. And uh, it once I added this in, it keeps my water so much cleaner. And then when I empty the water out, I just take out that filter and I kind of clean it out a little bit as well. So like I said, you do that maybe once every two months, just depends how often you use it. You can kind of see, is the water getting really dirty and a lot of particles in there? The filter really helps keep it clean and from getting too nasty. And then the other thing I do is once a week is I'll put a few drops of like some kind of essential oil in there, just antibacterial, you know, antiviral, antiparasitic kind of uh, uh, natural oil in there. You could put a little chlorine tab if you wanted, but again, I, but again, I really care about my health. So I'm not going to put chlorine in there, but if you really want to make sure your water is you know, clean, it's right above freezing. There's not much that can live in there, but you may want to put kind of a natural antibacterial in there as well. So nothing can grow in there. Like I said, once a week, I'll put a little, a few drops of essential oil in there just for an extra, just for extra measure. So something super important is make sure you unplug everything before you get into ice bath, okay? So it's unplugged before you get in. Every single morning when I get in this, I come over, I unplug it, and then I get in. I'll show you the setup that makes it super easy for me is I've got the, the Johnson controller, which is plugged into this power strip. And I've got the filter that's plugged into this power strip. And then all I have to do is unplug the power strip, get in the ice bath when I'm done, close the lid, plug the power strip back in, and that's it. That's all I have to do to use it. I don't have to put ice in there. I don't have to do anything else. I, Unplug one thing, get in, plug it back in, it's good to go. And the reason you wanna unplug it is just for safety. Like, I don't know if you would ever get shocked by getting in one, but I would never wanna risk it. I have been in there with it plugged in and have not been shocked, but I don't recommend it. Um, I don't know if it could ever happen. So just out of safety, out of common sense, make sure to unplug it before you get in. And let me show you how to set up your Johnson Control once you've got it. So, you're gonna just cycle through the options by clicking menu. You can see all these options. And once you set yours up, you can just come back to this video and follow this exactly. So there's two temperatures. The first one that shows up is gonna be your lower temperature. And so depending on where you have the ice bath, if it's indoors or outdoors, um, how hot it is outside, whatever. You, you can experiment with this range. But right now I have it at 40 degrees on the low end and 48 degrees on the high end. And you can see it's making ice and it's keeping the water right at basically 32 degrees. Remember, because that thermometer, take a look, is taped to the inside of the lid and that's just some black Gorilla tape and um, that stuff works great. So. How you set this up is you can take a look at mine, all these other things. I don't even remember what any of them do or what they're for, but if you just model this, you'll be fine. So it should say ASD and then zero. 
and then off and then let's say 40 degrees for the low end and then on and then 48 degrees for the high end and then S F and then one and then back to ASD so cycles back around so those are all and then zero and then off and then 40 so again you can kind of experiment with those once you have that set up just like that then you can experiment with those ranges once you fill it up for the first time again don't go over like two-thirds or three-quarters with water because um, once you get in the water it's going to all spill out um, you can experiment with the ranges and see usually it starts to build ice on the inside walls and then you can kind of break that ice off or you can raise the temperature one or two degrees and that ice will come off the walls all by itself all right so to recap you basically get your chest freezer get your johnson control uh, and that's all you need to get it started then when you're ready to clean out the water get your pump and again, links for everything will be in the description below. So this is the submersible water pump to, to pump the water out. And uh, from there, if you want to take it to the next level, get your filter, your pond filter. Keeps the water so much cleaner, so much longer. So again, link below in the description. And then you want to go to the next level, you can get a pair of stairs like these. Um, I can just climb in and out without the stairs, but I found it just to be easier and safer to actually have the stairs to get in and out. So I finally added those. I actually had this for five or six years without stairs. I've had this inside. I've had it outside right now. We've got it under this overhang, so I like it outside better, but it works inside as well. Um, and that's it. If you have other questions, leave it in the description below. If you want more health videos, hit that subscribe button and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Take care.